All right, welcome to part three. Now in part two, in the last video in this series, you learned a proven framework to create business cases that sell that your champions can use to sell up to senior executives so the deal does not fall apart at the end of the line. But what if you've got the wrong champion? doesn't matter how good your business case is, it's not going to go anywhere. So in this video, you are going to start to learn a framework to identify the right champion, okay? You're not going to learn everything in the framework, but we're going to start to learn it to get your mind turning a little bit. Because again, if you pick the wrong champion, you're going to get ghosted. That deal is going to take a long time to close. But if you pick the right champion, you're probably going to close a very big deal that feels far easier than other deals that you're currently working on. Okay, the business case that you create when you have the right champion, it's like rocket fuel. The business case you create when you have the wrong champion doesn't go anywhere. Now, once again, you are going to hear from Nate Nasrallah. He's the world's expert on creating champions that run through brick walls to get deals done. And again, he's closed huge deals with mega brands such as Allstate, Microsoft, State Farm. He's led a sales team, an enterprise sales team at that, to 26 consecutive quarters of quota attainment. And his clients who use some of the strategies that you're going to be learning here boast an average contract value of $1.19 million. So let's get into it. Plus, I've got a special freebie announcement and bonus coming to you at the end of this video. So stay tuned for the very end. And now let's hear from Nate. Now, I've used this, this word a lot, champion, champion. And we're going to continue to use that word a lot. So let's define it. Who exactly is a champion? Now, a champion, their profile, they always have three things. First is influence. They have to be able to shape the conversation that's happening internally to change the conversation. Second, they need incentives, something that ties them directly to your deal. It's like that, what's in it for me here? There has to be a very clear answer and they need intel, deal intel, that hard to find step-by-step -step type of insider info that can help shape the course of the deal that you're working on together. Now, in addition to this, it's not just the profile, or the potential to become a champion, you need evidence of actually working for your deal, moving it forward. So the analogy here, uh, physics analogy, think of it as the difference between potential and kinetic energy. A contact only becomes a true champion based on their behavior, producing evidence of moving your deal forward. Now, let me give you a practical example of these lessons that I learned the hard way, and this is going to frame and set up the next lesson that we're going to start digging into some more tactics on here. Okay. So the difference between a weak and a strong champion. So on one deal that we were doing, this was with a fortune 50 company, uh, one of the largest telecom providers in the world. And it was supposed to close by September 30th. There were a lot of signals. We were ticking off the mutual action plan, right? I thought we were doing pretty good now because this was a newer contact had hadn't really navigated the buying process in the past we ended up getting tangled up inside of a five month process of getting legal terms ironed out. The deal actually didn't close until February 28th of the following year, right? So that was, let's see, Q3, four, uh, one. So two quarters later past the forecasted date. Now, part of the reason was they had basically built up this MSA that was ruthless. Anytime a vendor or a service provider had screwed them over, they basically put another clause in there over the course of like 30, 40 years to make this massive 65 page document. So even though we had a software platform, we were looking at clauses that was like, uh, you know, climbing telephone poles and going on site with physical premises. And it was just, it was, it was madness. It was nuts. Now contrast this with a very strong champion that was on our side. This was with also another fortune 50 company. So just as large, However, she had been burnt in the past and she knew that the legal process could get pretty gnarly. So what did she do? Because she was relying or was going to rely on our platform for a new project that she was standing up internally. We got the deal done a month early because she said, hey, instead of legal, if you guys are cool with it, we'll be cool with it. We'll just do an NDA. I'll get a PO going and then we're just going to start working together. So we skipped the legal process entirely. 
And there's no way that that would have happened unless we were working with that specific champion. And so the difference here in the key takeaway is that not all champions are created equal. And so we need to talk about who is and isn't the right champion so that you can avoid tying your deal to the wrong contact. So hopefully now after that little primer, you are feeling just as excited to go real deep on the art of selling with champions and building out a compelling business case. So let's keep going and I'll see you in the next lesson. Hey everybody, welcome back. This is lesson two. Now, if I did my job well in the first lesson, you rolled right from that into the second lesson because you now see making the shift to selling with champions is powerful. It is impactful and you're not going to get a deal done without a solid and a committed champion. Now, if you kind of pause and you came back to this, that's all right. It hurts my feelings a little bit. However, we're going to go much more tactical on this lesson. So hopefully you continue to see this, how this idea of selling with champions will play out within your pipeline. And I hope to show you some things that you may never have considered before about picking the right champions to work with. So we're going to dig in in this lesson into a, an approach that I call the baseball card approach. And the baseball card approach is all about understanding the right champions that you want to work with. Because the only thing that is worse than not having a champion to sell with is hitching your deal to the wrong champion. So we're going to avoid that. Now, just to level set, you may say, hey, somebody is fired up about our deal. They're giving me all sorts of insider information. Surely they must be a champion. But if you remember... There's this idea of influence that's part of it. So they could be a coach, not a champion, because they can't shape internal conversations. They don't have the standing with their team to do that. Now, another mistake is to call somebody with that standing a champion. However, they could just be an influencer. And this is a very dangerous one to confuse because they may not be directly tied to your deal. They could say, hey, this is for sure a problem that we need to invest in solving but we're going to go in another direction with another partner in order to get it done. An influencer can shift your deal. A champion, they have all three traits, influence, incentive, intel, and there's evidence that they're working for your deal specifically. So with that in mind, let's go deeper on this topic of influence because it is not just a static concept like this person has influence, this person doesn't have influence. Influence is something that is a spectrum. You can have a varying degree of influence and it will rise and fall over time. It can change. That's especially important if you're already doing some type of enterprise or strategic deal with a very long sales cycle. Let me give you an example. You have probably heard the saying that a message is not separate from its messenger, meaning the way your message is received depends on who is sharing the message, the messenger. So let's say you're selling to a marketing team. The SVP of marketing is bringing your business case forward. And let's say you are shifting for the very first time to an omni-channel approach. They're going to be experimenting with all new sorts of things. That person, they could be seen as a forward thinker, a visionary. Now let's say an analyst brings the very same message, right? The exact same business case. They bring that to their team. Hey, let's start experimenting with these new channels they could be branded as outlandish, like that's never going to work. We're never going to go through that amount of change. So the idea here is that this is not as straightforward as a title. And that's kind of why I pick this example, SVP versus analyst, because when most people think influence, they go toward title. However, there's a lot of nuance in this topic that I want to begin to unpack with you. This is key. And we have to talk about this and champions before we can go into the art of writing business cases. Because for better or worse, you're basically renting your champion's credibility. And that will change the way that different people see your business case or see your message. And you could also say like, maybe there just is no credibility or lack thereof. And therefore your business case, even though you may have totally crushed it, put together a brilliant case, it's just not gonna go anywhere because you were attaching it to the wrong contact. On a very practical level, the way to think about the fact that not all champions are created equal. In fact, some contacts aren't champions at all. It's this idea of believability rating. And a believability rating, that's not my word. That comes from the founder of a hedge fund named Ray Dalio. Um, 
His hedge fund is called Bridgewater Capital. It is one of the largest, highest performing hedge funds of all time. They use a believability rating in order to make investment decisions. So large multi-million, multi-billion dollar decisions are all based on believability. Here's how he defines believability or a believable opinion. He says the most believable opinions are those of people who have repeatedly and successfully accomplished the thing in question. They've demonstrated that they can logically explain the cause-effect relationships behind their conclusions. Meaning, or in other words, there is a coherent narrative behind the decision. However, um, for that to be the case, you know, everybody has to be aligned on what are some like actual objective, trustworthy ways to assess people. So this is how they do this. Now catch this, because this is this is fascinating. He says at Bridgewater, everyone's believability is tracked and measured systematically using tools. They they call it like a baseball card and the dot collector app. This is basically something that um, shows them whenever they're making a decision, it says displays both both the equal weighted average and the believability weighted results along with each person's vote. Now, the reason why I think that's fascinating is what's he saying? Essentially, the message is changed and therefore the route that we go is changed. We get two different scores based on who is voting for what. It's the person, their track record, all of the things that makes up their baseball card that will change the direction that they move in. Now, you're probably like, look, <laughs> we don't use a software called the dot collector to measure and track these things. This seems a little wild. And certainly the buying teams that we work with, they're not like building algorithms to measure people internally. True. However, they're still doing this in their mind. If you think about it, like look, look back to the last team meeting that you were part of. No doubt when different people speak, you are filtering their words based on what you know about them, whether they are a high performer, low performer, based on the success of past ideas, you're saying, do I believe this person? Am I going to trust what they're saying? We all do this. It's just a mental filter that we use to process information when we're hearing it. If you're not familiar, by the way, with a baseball card, if you've never seen this, I used to ride my bike down to, there was this, uh, what was called White Hen Pantry. I don't know if anybody is old enough to remember White Hen before it went out of business. But I would, uh, with my best friend, ride our bike down there and we'd open up these baseball cards. The most valuable ones were those with the most impressive stats across different dimensions. And so you can see all of the different scores. So it's the same thing. You are champions. Each of them, their internal teams, they assign them a baseball cord and they rank them across different dimensions. Here are some examples. Let's say somebody's baseball card they have a score of a 91% believability, a highly believable champion. For example, maybe they were personally recruited by the executive that they worked with in the past. Maybe they like just exude confidence, right? When they're in a meeting, in a group setting, everybody turns and they look to them. Like, what do they think? What are they going to say? And it's possible that they successfully led a similar project from start to finish with a incredible outcome, right? That is a highly believable champion. However, if we look at another contact, we might say that's actually just a 21% believable person because they are flaky. They rarely follow through. They're prone to exaggerate the facts to get their own way. I mean, come on, you can probably think about some people like this in your own internal team or around your company. They were responsible for an absolute train wreck of a project that didn't go well at all. And what I would say here is like that person's internal reputation their lack of social capital, low believability, in other words, means they probably hold so low or even no influence internally that they can't be a champion. That's just a contact on the buying team. So to go back, this is the person that you want to attach your deal to, that you want to develop your business case with, not this person. Okay. Track record alone or some of the factors that we went through these can weigh in more or less into a believability score based on what is unique about a certain account. So for example, let's say one company had a data breach, another company didn't. One company had a couple failed projects trying to overcome this project, another didn't. That is definitely going to affect the believability rating or the way you build a baseball card for champions in one account versus another. I also want to call out one thing. 
When I talk about champion singular, I'm going to talk about assessing the strength, the influence of particular champions, but no, just, you know, kind of to continue the analogy, you want to build out a whole bench of champions. You need technical champions, financial champions, business champions, executive champions, right? Lots of different types of champions. For example, let's say you hold a highly technical product. You know you're going to have to go deep to get daily users on board. You may need a couple of different technical champions on your bench for that deal, which may not be true for another deal. All right. So in this free video series so far, you've learned strategies to find, create, and empower champions to run through brick walls and sell when you're not in the room. Now, if you commit yourself to this craft, if you get really good at selling with champions, identifying champions, creating champions, and empowering them with bulletproof business cases, if you commit to that, you'll wake up to a different life and career in about a year or so from now. Okay, this is a powerful skill, especially when it comes to selling through a tough economy. That's why I am incredibly excited to announce our full online course that all but guarantees your success in this skill, Selling with Champions, which is going live May 25th at 8 a.m. Pacific time. In that course, you're going to learn how to find and create champions that run through brick walls and sell when you're not in the room with a repeatable framework for champion development. Also, you can close bigger deals faster and without getting ghosted, without those deals slipping month to month and quarter to quarter. We're opening up registration for this new course on Thursday, May 25th at 8 a.m. sharp. And here's what you need to know about that. First, this is going to be a limited time offer. Okay. When we open up registration, there are going to be a few things that are going to disappear pretty quick. Number one is the course is going to be 40% off when we launch it. And then number two, we're going to include about $5,000 worth of bonuses for those that sign up early. The second thing you need to know is for the first five and only five people that sign up, Nate was kind enough to offer a free 30-minute one-on-one business case teardown. In other words, if you're one of the first five people to sign up for the course, you get to meet with Nate directly. You get to have him review your business case on a deal that you're working on right now. And he's going to go through it with you with a fine tooth comb, improve it so that you are more likely to close an active deal in your pipeline right now. Now, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about the course, what's inside it, and all of the bonuses you get when we go live on Thursday morning. So stay tuned for that. For now, there's just one thing you need to do. Below this video, there's a little button called Add to Calendar. Okay, if you click that, it's going to add a reminder to your calendar with a link to the sign-up page for Thursday, May 25th at 8 a.m. Add that to your calendar right now so that you don't miss this. And if you decide you want to take advantage of all the early bird offers, such as 40% off, the $5,000 worth of bonuses, as well as get your chance at getting a one-on-one -on -one with Nate, Add that to your calendar now so that you're one of the first people in. At the same time, I'm going to send you an email on Thursday morning around that time so that you don't miss a thing and that so you have a reminder to take advantage of this early bird offer. So go add this to your calendar now. Click the button below this video to add it to your calendar. Keep your eyes peeled for the Thursday morning email I'm going to send your way. And I am so looking forward to Thursday and I'll see you there.